All right, we're back. We're going to uh, take apart this this uh, rear part of the mobility scooter. It is uh, the Go Go uh, Go Go uh, Elite. It's um, not terribly complicated in terms of mechanical things. It's pretty simple little contraption. There are these four big screws that hold that hold the transaxle and to, onto the frame, and that this is it in terms of what's being held onto the frame. There are a few wires that need to be disconnected, and then uh, most of all, and then last of all, is this um, is this clutch lever here that is for uh, allowing the thing to roll. So, um, in doing this, I have no idea whether or not I am going to achieve my goal, which is to uh, make this. Um, to rebuild this transaxle because I, I rebuilt it uh, a month ago and I think I built the whole thing too tightly when it is slowing down or when it's in reverse you hear a terrible grinding sound I think that was just because I built it too tightly I think it's built properly as you can see the um, wheels turn in opposite directions they'll go together you can hear that noise there I don't think that should be that should be there if they go the other direction it's fine but this direction you can hear the hear the noise, and that back pressure is what I'm trying to get rid of. So I should be able to know whether or not I fix this thing um, pretty quickly here. So uh, essentially I'm going to take apart these four bolts, all the bolts that are holding this, this piece to this piece um, of the transaxle. I'm gonna take apart the, uh, the arm, this clutch arm. So let's just start. So one of the things that, as you saw, see I did here is, well first of all I have an Allen wrench on the back side because these bolts go all the way through and I can't just do the bolts without the Allen wrench. But as you see here I'm sitting on cardboard because this makes, this is a lot of, uh, this is a lot of mess. So and I probably should disconnect all of the other pieces first. Um, prior to doing this. but. Now what I normally do is I like to keep all the pieces together so I'll keep my screws and washers together and I'll pull out the whole the whole, the whole of screw assembly. I'll pull out so this I'll pull out this whole assembly and I'll even take out the the rubber grommets and I'll just put them all together so that I have everything together like that. And uh, I'll have four of those in a moment. Here I'm taking off the wheel. I'm only taking off one wheel. Um, the truth is that the other wheel doesn't want to come off. So uh, I'm not not going to bother with it. Again, I kind of just put the bolts in there. The wheel has a has a little uh, a slug, and this is to keep the wheel from turning. I keep that with the wheel as well, so I don't lose it. So this whole thing is going to go out this way once I take off the the clutch arm, and that's just two little screws. I've undone I've done done the bolts for the most part. There, There's a washer. This bolt washer and a screw on it. Um, again, this I just do it like I just put them back together like this just so that um, you don't lose any parts. This is really going to be important. <laughs> uh, it's really going to be important to keep track of things when you take apart the uh, transaxle because um, as like I did, you probably will will um, will misplace things. So there I undid the wire there. So this wire is connected to this piece. So in order to get this off, I'm going to have to take this off as well. I was hoping I wouldn't have to, but apparently I do. I used to, uh, when I was a kid, I used to build uh, engines. Specifically, um, I had, um, my uncle was a, 
was a mechanic you know, or had his own uh, sh VW shop. So um, I got to rebuild a bunch of Volkswagen engines. And of course, Volkswagen engines are the simplest engine possible or in the world. Um, but it gave me a reasonable understanding of how cars operate. And so they're a lot more complex these days, but this is more along the lines of a Volkswagen engine. It's super, super simple. There's not really a lot to it. Um, it's motor, transaxle, some electrical to that, and that's really it. Um, so when something goes wrong with this, you know, the tendency is to want to buy a new one. And I've considered it several times because these are pretty cheap. What do they cost, Sherry? A thousand. a thousand bucks you can buy a new one of these things. And mostly I've considered buying a new one more than anything just for spare parts. Um, but if we bought a new one every single time there was a problem, um, we would have spent a lot of money at this point. So what we spent so far was some money on some batteries. Like I said in the last video, we replaced the batteries uh, three times, so that's 300 bucks in batteries. Um, we've, I don't think they're 100 bucks each, but let's just call it that. Uh, got the bigger battery case. Um, that was, I think, 100 or so, but that also came with batteries. It was like two, maybe it was like 200 bucks for the bigger, you know, go 10 miles on the case. Uh, and uh, we got a backpack for it. Uh, oh, the head didn't cost us anything. The airline actually paid for that because they broke, they, they threw the thing, so they broke it. All right, so all I have to do is get, is take this clutch ar arm off and I could pull this whole thing out of, pull this whole thing out of here. So these uh, screws that hold this lever on, they're really small. The other thing too is that the small screw is threaded into this metal and this, this uh, bolt, this nut, really just locks the screw on. So you kind of have to take the, and I'm, I'm bad right now, I'm using some needle nose lock, um, lock grips for, for taking these bolts off, but really you should use a, I mean, you should use a, a wrench, but it's really hard to get in there, so. I'm just using these. Here is the uh, clutch lever. I kind of have to take this off. I wish I didn't have to, because but it's the only way I can slide this assembly out. Yeah. So, clutch lever. I put the little screws in there just so I don't lose them. And now this whole thing. This whole thing be able to come out here. So this is the the back cage, um, and I uh, will put that aside. I won't need that for until I'm ready to assemble this thing again. And as you can see here, here's the transaxle and here's the motor. So I've tried to find a replacement motor for this because I thought, one, it would be fun to go a little bit more powerful. We've got a bigger battery, why not a bigger motor? Um, however, I couldn't find anything that would work. Um, I couldn't even find a replacement for this. I know that they've got to exist. There's some company that's making these that are reselling them to go, go. I want the same motor and it should just, it should, I should be able to just find it, um, but I haven't been able to find it. So if you know where to find it, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll probably buy one. But although I, re I really kind of want something that's a little more uh, high energy than that. So the next thing is going to be to, uh, I'm going to take the motor off of the transaxle. That is uh, these three bolts here. I don't think there's four. Yeah, it's just these three bolts and that'll slide the transaxle down. The part that was broken is actually right in this section here. The one that I, that I replaced. This right here is a bearing that looks very similar to a skateboard bearing. Um, in fact, I'd say it is one, but um, it's a sealed, it's a sealed bearing. I'll show it to you when I take this thing apart. I also notice my hands are pretty dirty and this is just from the outside dirt. Once we get inside here, it's going to be even worse. Um, this, this is very greasy on the inside of this and any dirt at all is going to be on everything. And uh, I try not to get dirt on the inside of this thing. I'll probably, I'll probably uh, have to uh, wipe it down since paper towels 
that is mostly to clean up as we go, or will be to clean up as we go. So let's let's start in on this, and I think this is the right Allen wrench. Yep. And I'll just start pulling this apart. All right, here's the motor. This is the piece that I talked about last time that gets uh, the, this, or this is one of the pieces that um, has these pins. And so they have one that goes between the, that goes between the cage and the front part, and that's this one here. Uh, there's not a lot of vibration between the back and the front, so there hasn't been a lot of problem with these pins opening up the, the connectors on the other side. It's, it's always been the pins, the issue has always been the pins that are, that are connecting to the battery. All right, so we have this, this, this is, uh, is pretty much uh, ready. Um, being, having worked in a, uh, on engines, I tend to, and this is not necessary here, but I tend to do uh, screw patterns, which I don't think it's really necessary, but why not? So every time, you know, when you're putting on a tire, of course you want to use a bolt pattern. But I'd say the same thing about the transaxle here too. Uh, not so much taking it apart, but um, and which is what I'm doing now, and I'm just loosening each one before I go the long way because it's just easier to turn. Um, but taking it apart, whatever. But putting it together, it's it's you know why not put use some kind of pattern and kind of just go opposite and make sort of a star pattern with your uh, with your bolts. I already took off three bolts that were holding on the um, the motor, so I'll just put the others with them. Um, in terms of size, I think that the motor bolts are different sizes than the the rest. So I don't think I'm gonna have a problem remembering which go to where. I think that I think these are all the same size, and then these two are the same size, and then this one is the smallest one. So uh, the transaxle, I think, putting the bolts, finding out which bolts go where is not the is not a uh, big problem. The difference between a um, transmission and a transaxle has to do with whether or not the, um, it has to do with the way the uh, gears are positioned. A, uh, a transmission takes the, takes a, a, a drive shaft, uh, sorry, the drive shaft comes down to the transmission, which then just then goes to the, or the drive shaft goes to transmission, and then transmission goes to the wheels. A transaxle um, is is right off of the motor, and it goes directly to the wheel. So you, you tend to have, uh, or I think you tend to, you always you seem to have, you have transaxles. I'm going to keep this closed while I take this last bolt off. You have transaxles. So I'm just holding it down below, just so that it doesn't fly apart on me. You have transaxles in like front wheel drive uh, vehicles because the engine is right there and the tra what would be the transmission but is the transaxle goes directly to the wheels so I can start taking this apart um, and it'll have all sorts of gears you can see there's a there's a gear right here I'm gonna leave that one on and there's the rest of the assembly and uh, my gear oil is still intact in there good this is what gets attached to the this sits right inside there, or actually not right inside there because there's another piece, but this sits right um, right, right there to, to the motor. So this um, motor is attached here and this just keeps this from spinning out. So there are two things that I wanted to do. Um, there are some bearings in this assembly that I want to um, I want to make sure our, so in here, and I can also see this. You can see that if I turn this, those turn those ways. The, this, these turn in that direction, and they would turn, in, in turn, turn this shaft there. So there are a few bearings. There's this, this bearing here. Um, is this gear here. So this bearing, this bearing here keeps separation between this gear and the shaft and the and the crankcase. 
now you can see my hands are going to get pretty greasy pretty quickly here. And there are a few more bearings like that. I'm going to pull, I think, pull this thing out for now. Actually, sorry, I, was, I said the wrong thing. This is the bearing that was broken, not the big one, the small one. This is, this is the skateboard bearing. I, I told you the big one. Anyway, so this, this is the bearing that was broken, and this is, I spent 20 bucks on this little, that little piece. I'm going to set this aside on a piece of, I'm setting this aside on a piece of uh, paper towel so it doesn't get too dirty. Um, I don't, you don't want to put dirt inside of this. If, if you get dirt inside of this, then it'll eventually act like sandpaper, or will act like sandpaper, and cause your, um, cause your gears to, to uh, erode quicker. Okay, here's a paper washer. It's got a little plug there too. Keep that all together. And I want to get I want to take this thing apart. All right, so I'm not doing a very good job of keeping everything together. This thing ends up going on here, like that. And then there, there are these gears. I'll put this on this paper towel as well. And I have this, and then I have this gear. I have this gear and that washer. So the thing, all right, so, so I'm going to remember that one goes on the wheel side. Here is this washer. I'll take this pin out. There will be a lot of paper towels involved in this. And I, I don't want to really ruin this, but it's not, this pin is not, there we go. So this pin goes into that, that one there. And I just wanted to get this washer here off. So I have three washers. And the funny thing about these washers is that they're all different sizes. There's a thin, so these are the three washers. And I think um, because these, because these gears here, um, as far as I can tell, are all the same. These are all, because they interlock together, they, they have to be the same. But those gears there are the same. But these washers are not the same. So I believe that I put the washers in the wrong place. I, I don't know where there's information about this transaxle. So um, I'm kind of just doing it by the fact that there aren't a lot of parts in it. There's only four of these small gears, this big gear. And um, one of the things that I can do is let's look to see if we can see where the grinding is coming from. Um, well. I thought that this might be a suspect, that this gear might be a suspect as the grinding. And it does look like it's pretty polished. But it's polished on both sides. So I'm not sure that it's the cause of the grinding. But maybe it is. Um, these look pretty dark. They don't look like they're, they don't look like they're grinding. Yeah, they don't look like they're grinding. And then this thing here, it looks like, it looks like the, I can't really tell, but it looks like it's grind, it looks like it's polished on the top side and the bottom side isn't. So what does that tell me? That tells me and it was sitting in like this. I took it out and I put it exactly the way I took it out. So it was sitting in like this. Maybe what I did is I put this in upside down. Maybe this goes this way and not this way. And that's possibly what I did wrong. This is, this is a prime example of 
when you take something apart, I mean, right now I could put it back together because I was very careful about where I put everything. But this is a good example as when you take something apart, you need to, uh, especially <laughs> gearbox, you need to put everything in a spot where you know exactly where it goes back together because, you know, like I said, these three washers, I don't know which washer goes, goes where. I mean, they obviously go all around. They all fit around this, but do they, but where? In the uh, in the chain, are they supposed to go? So my theory was that I put the whole thing together too tightly, and it needs a little more wiggle room, which which makes sense to me because it you don't want the gearbox to be too tight anyway because there needs to be some room for the the grease to um, to coat the parts. I've taken this apart and put it together about twice now. Right now, only two bolts are holding it together. I mean, that's all, I'm, that's all I was trying to do. And what I'm doing is I'm holding one side, and it's not making a whole lot of noise when I hold one side and move it around. If I go, and then if I do both wheels like they were going together, it's pretty quiet. I can hear a little bit of a zoom in one direction, and that's probably the reverse direction. Okay, so I think that this is the proper way to build it, or very nearly close to the proper way to build it. I'm going to go with this. So I'm going to take this apart one last time. I have some grease. I'm going to put some more grease in because I've taken a lot of the grease out in my hands. Um, pack it pretty full with grease. There's uh, no reason why not to. Um, do you want to have air pockets in there? Not so much. It's really just... It's just to keep the whole thing lubricated. Um, so that's, uh, so when they say pack it with grease, they mean it. And the grease, uh, sooner or later, it compresses and goes down. So it, it does, it does, it does lose a bit of its, a bit of its volume over time. So what I did was I took the, the big gear. Here, I'll take it apart right now, in fact, because I'll start packing it with grease. I took the big gear, I flipped it upside down. That made it worse. Um, when I put it back together, it made it worse. Um, and that was, uh, that, that, I wouldn't say barely rolled, but it made a lot of, you know, you know it, it was not happy just being flipped upside down. So I thought, well, what if, what, what, I'm, what I'm really fighting is not that I put it together too tightly, but that the big gear is sitting in the wrong spot on that, on that one the worm drive gear. And uh, I think that that's really what the, the issue is, is that it was sitting in the wrong spot. So I kept it flipped over, and then I moved the big washer so that it would push it into, so that it would push it into a further, uh, further up that worm drive gear. And that's where we are now. So let's take this apart. Finish, almost finished. I tried to take this wheel off, as you saw, and I left it on. It actually makes it's a pretty good stand. You know, I could just leave it like this and take this whole thing apart with the wheel like that, and I have a nice good stand. So actually, leave the wheel on. Don't, don't take it apart. Um, this. Well, pull this. Oh, great. That wasn't what I wanted to do. All right, but all I lost was the, I didn't lose the, I didn't lose. I didn't lose the shims, and I have this in the right order, so everything's fine there. Uh, what I lost were these these gears that go inside here. Um, that's not a big deal. Those aren't the, those aren't the issue. So I will just put these back in here. They have a they have two pieces. They have this little square piece that goes inside of a, a round washer, and that goes inside here, and that allows this to sit freely that allows this gear to sit freely inside this gear. So wherever this gear is floating, it can float along with it. Same thing with this gear. The, the reason why I took this part wasn't really to show you um, what I did. So this gear here I had flipped upside down and I put I put a bigger washer between this gear and the uh, the gear that's right here going this way. I'm not gonna take it apart again because I don't want it to fall apart. So this is how much grease I used last time. And um, 
I'm going to clean off my fingers a little bit before adding grease. I do have some dirt on them in the nature of handling the metal. And I'm just going to uh, just going to pack this grease right up on top of here, get it in the holes. It's a messy job, just doesn't matter. Just get it all over the gears, all in the holes. Okay. That should be that should be good enough. Um, I already had a bit of grease. I was just adding back to it. Um, I didn't clean it off completely because um, it wasn't really dirty. I didn't really get it dirty. I've been putting it on the paper towels. But you could see I cleaned it off last time. You could see just from the month of using it, this has turned pretty brown. So uh, that brown is is probably mixed metals. Well, I don't feel a whole lot. So that's okay. That's just that's just the grease breaking down. Um, but there's got to be some metal in there too, which is why it turns brown. But I don't feel like chips or anything like that. And I did think it. W I do believe that it did wear down over time because oh, also this worm drive gear. I do want to get some grease on that too. In around that cavity in there. Just I'm just going to jam it in there. Just get it everywhere. I'll put some on the te teeth of this gear. Okay. All right, so now I'm ready to reassemble this thing and put it back on the uh, scooter. This goes to bed together pretty easily. Um, like, I, like, <laughs> like I said, having the wheel here kind of makes for a good little stand. Um, all I have to do is, um, so it already has the paper uh, washer. All right, so this worm drive gear, uh, with this on here, I like to push it in there first because it's kind of hard to get in it otherwise. But with that on there, I kind of have to, you kind of have to tilt it on, and then you can get this whole thing on there like that, and you can feel that it turns. Push that up into there. I'm just moving the grease around, and kind of, this should go together pretty easily, like that. Just to get it. Now the bolts are on the other side, so I flipped the whole thing over. Almost lost it. There's a little, there's a little alignment plug there, push that down. And I could start screwing this thing back together. It's, um, like I said, it'll go together pretty easily. Getting the whole scooter together is kind of just in the reverse order of what I took it apart in. So when I put this together with these two screws, I'm just gonna check to see if it still turns and still okay, and if it is, then we'll do the rest. Last time I, I heard that noise when I tested it, when I built this last time, but I thought, oh, it's fine. And the truth is it wasn't. It, that noise under power just magnifies. Um, so there really shouldn't be any noise other than kind of a, there should be a little bit of a mechanical gear noise because it is it is gears or they are gears, but um, it shouldn't sound shouldn't sound like anything's really wrong. So so me holding one side, this is if you were in a turn in a big turn and one side was just going and the other side wasn't. That's not going to happen very often. What's really going to happen is. What's really going to happen is both wheels will turn at the same time. So there is a bit of noise. There is a bit of noise when I do that, but it just sounds like gears. I don't know. Is that? No, that sounds a lot better than it was before. Before it, that doesn't sound like grinding to me. That just sounds like gears unwinding. So I'm going to call that good. Um, it may not be perfect. I may have screwed something up, but I could do this a dozen more tries and not get it better. So. Let's call it a day and put this thing back together. Just getting the motor put back on here. You know, and this is all just kind of a nerve, uh, <laughs> this is all very kind of scary because I, 
I don't know if we're 100, you know, 100% sure that this is going to work great or not. I mean, I, I, Sherry's been going to the market and to the beach and driving various places, and uh, every time the scooter goes downhill or she slows down, it goes, <laughs> or it's been doing that. So <laughs> hopefully this takes care of it. And hopefully I didn't make it worse. Hopefully I didn't create a problem because, you know, if you put one, if you put a transmission or transaxle together improperly, the gears aren't lined up right, and you could be putting a lot of stress on, like, the, the tip of a gear rather than the, or the tooth, you know, the tip of the tooth instead of the uh, deep into it. So I think in this case I didn't change much. I did, um, did I change anything about... Yeah, I did. I did change a little bit about how the gears sit together, so I'm not exactly sure um, how much pressure I'm putting on on what part of the gear. Again, it would be nice to have instructions, and they probably do exist. Um, and somebody who does this for a living could probably tell me, "Oh, you're doing it all wrong," and I'll say, "Well, yeah, but for the sake of..." Going out and buying another one. Oh, and you can buy another one. Uh, how much do these uh, transaxles cost? I think we saw them online for, for like 500 bucks. Um, but, you know, like I said, I spent 20 bucks for that one piece that's right there. And Sherry's had to put up with a bunch of noise for a month. I haven't had time to, to fix it, so... Hopefully this is, hopefully this is fixing it. All right, so the next step is to get this thing back into, back into here. All of this is easy to do because this has to go in this way. You know, you can't do it wrong because here's the clutch. Clutch goes right in there, so this, this whole thing. goes into here. So I'm going to probably put it, I'm going to put it in the exact order that I took it, or the exact order that I took it apart, I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put the, I'm going to bolt it up first, then I'll put the clutch back together. I'll do the wheels last. I'll put, probably put that wheel on first, and then uh, that'll be that, and then we'll see about uh, testing this thing in a little bit. These rubber washers that go on here they're meant to simply keep vibration down. So that's, that's what they're for. And uh, every, every engine I've ever worked on has some kind of washer like that. So there's, a, there's, a, there's one on either side, and they kind of go together onto the piece of metal so that they, these things fit into the holes. But that's to keep vibration down. So when you're putting these, anything on with these, anything that you're putting on with these rubber washers or any kind of rubber washers, you don't really want to crank it down too much. You want to leave some room. You want it to be tight, so it's taut, but you don't want it to be like, you don't want it to be um, cranked down as hard as you can go. You don't, because you don't want to flatten out the rubber. You want to leave it somewhat intact so that it does absorb vibration. Otherwise, you're just, there's no point of even having the, the washer in there if you, if you, uh, crank it down super tight. Before I put the wheel back on, I'll put the, it'll be easier to deal with. I have easier access without the wheel on, so I'll put this on here. This is a little bit of a trick. I'll put it on lightly. Here, here are the screws. Put it on lightly at first, and then I have to put, then I will connect it later. I'll connect it to the, uh, to the forward part of the scooter and slide it around to make it make it fit. And while it's connected, I'll crank it down. But I can't crank it down now because it's gonna this this is not necessarily gonna be in the right spot. So uh, like I said, I'll just I'll just put it on very lightly. So I'll put this so I'll put this connector so it's snug, 
but I still wanted to be able to move it around. And there's like the, there's a bunch of room for it to go, so it's going to leave it like that because it may it may need uh, to be done. It need, it will need to be moved. All right, so let's get this other wheel on. This is simple enough. It's got the slug goes, or this, um, yeah, this slug goes in there, and the wheel should slide right over top of the slug, although I dropped it. It's right here. Let's put this back on. Let's try this again. I'll hold it in place this time. There we go. Now, there. That goes like that. This goes like this. There's a little offset to the clutch. Um, I don't think that's by design. I think that's because it's been dropped few times. So I've got the clutch on. The clutch seems to work. I'm putting on the little lock bolts that go onto the clutch. I think my lock bolts are just there on the, just the screws screw into the piece of metal that is the lower part of the clutch, but lever, say clutch lever. But um, these bolts here once they're tight and they're very small and they're in an awkward position, because why wouldn't they be? <laughs> as soon as they're in, as soon as they're in, then we can uh, start assembling the scooter again and uh, see if my see if my fix was a fix or not. All right, so I'm very sweaty because it's hot here and uh, we don't have air conditioning, so <laughs> pardon my dripping. But um, here's where this is, this is kind of loose. Here's where I need to get that connector to match up with this. So I'm going to connect it and then I'm going to tighten this down so that they, um, so they marry up pretty well, so they marry up okay. Notice it doesn't go together very easily. Um, where normally it does, and it's just because those are not, those pieces are not in the right spot. So I probably have to turn it over on its side here and kind of wiggle this around. You can see in there, uh, I can see in there. And I'll try to. There we go. So I got this to line up, and this whole thing locks down. Now that they're together, I'll turn this over and I will just tighten this connector up so that uh, so that they're together. These bolts don't have to be super tight, just enough that they don't come out. I think one time I took this apart. I put everything back together with Loctite, but um, I think that's a little bit of overkill. Um, it's not really necessary. It doesn't hurt anything. It shouldn't make it much harder to take apart. Um, but generally speaking, the screws on this don't seem to fall out. The only ones that have fallen out are the screws that go on the arms and it's and I th and it's just because they are acting as pivot joints and those arms are going up and down all the time every time every time Sherry gets out of her chair she lifts up one of the arms somebody's going to comment 
and I know someone will, why didn't you put the wheels on last? And I understand. And that's what I should have done. Mostly I was concerned that the transaxle wasn't going to work. So I wanted to get the wheels on so I can test it. Um, in truth though, even if it didn't work, um, it wouldn't have mattered because I'm not going to rebuild it. I mean, maybe I'll do it in a little, in a few weeks, but I'm not going to do it again today. Let's make this thing go right side up. Let's put that on like that. Like a throwing cable, let's get a battery. I'm not going to bother with a seat. There's a battery. Let's turn the bad boy on. That beeping means the clutch needs to be there. Okay, so now the thing seems to go. Okay, so I think it's, I think uh, it's better. I think it's better than it was. I can hear a little bit of a noise, but I don't think it's, it's not the grinding sound that it was. So, uh, Sherry's wondering if it's gonna have greasy wheels. No more greasy than they were before. Nothing was really on the cardboard. I mean, the, this thing wasn't on the cardboard. So, uh, there you go. We're gonna call this one done. And uh, I believe that the sound is gone. I mean, if we, the sound was when most, you could hear it definitely when you're going backwards. So here, if I do a test to go backwards, I could hear a little bit of a sound, but it was, it's not the grinding that it was a bit ago. So there's a little, and so it's better, but not perfect. Um, and I'm not, I'm not even sure if it's that bad at all. Okay, well that's it. That's my uh, two videos on a uh, GoGo scooter. Um, I think it's a good little scooter. It's a piece of electrical equipment. And um, in that, it's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. Um, if yours doesn't work, don't really ask me any questions because I really won't know the answers. The, the biggest things are that the, the ones that are obvious are the connection between the battery and the scooter. If your scooter is lurching, that's the problem there. If, um, if your battery is dying, it's either the battery is dead, duh, or the, your charger isn't charging. So really, it's one of those three things every single time. It, I, I don't think there's been a case except for recently with the transaxle that it has been anything else ever with this scooter. Um, we've whacked the brain a bunch of times. It's been fine. It's never been the levers. It's never been the any other part of the electronics. It's just been those three things. The, the connection between the battery and the scooter. Constant battle with that. And I just have to keep on closing up the connection um, with a little screwdriver or something. And um, the batteries die because they're batteries. That's what happens. And uh, the chargers don't last terribly long. Maybe a year and a half, two years is how long a charger seems to last. Um, so you get another $40 charger, everything's good. Other than that, I'm going to call this one good. And uh, look at uh, Howley Dreamer. It's one of my other podcasts. And uh, Preflight TV I haven't done in a while, but uh, it'll come back. See you around.